In this lecture, we will talk about transport of urine from the kidney through the ureters into the bladder. Transport of urine from the kidney through the ureter into the bladder. As we are discussing uh, urine formation and we have discussed the nephron, the bladder, similarly, uh, it is now important to uh, discuss the transport of urine finally. Now, to start, uh, we will discuss uh, initially the urine formation at the nephron and then we will discuss the transport of urine. Now, this kidney basically is the same kidney like this one, but it has been enlarged for the purpose of understanding and explaining the things. Otherwise, it is just the same. So, we have previously discussed that the kidney basically has an outer cortex, inner medulla, and inside the medulla there are pyramids. At the tips of the pyramids there is papilla which opens in these minor calluses, minor calluses, minor calluses open in these major calluses, major calluses open in the renal pelvis, and then the renal pelvis takes uh, open in this urinary bladder, uh, sorry, ureter. Ureter basically takes the urine into the urinary bladder, and the urinary bladder opens into the urethra, and through the urethra urine goes out of the body. But urine formation initially starts at this level, at the nephron level, and these are nephrons uh, which are basically present in a lot of number they are in millions in the uh, kidneys and we discussed that these are the pyramids which are basically uh, having thousands and thousands of nephron now out of thousands and thousands of nephron we have enlarged this one nephron which is basically present here urine formation starts here we will just uh, revise it quickly that initially blood filters here at the uh, glomerulus here or here we also discussed that these are two different types of nephrons, the uh, juxtamedullary nephron and the cortical nephron, due to their position in the kidney, otherwise they are the same. So, blood is filtered here, the filtrate basically moves through these tubules, initially the uh, proximal tubule, then the uh, descending loop of Henle, then the ascending loop of Henle, then the distal tubule, then the cortical collecting uh, ducts, and then the uh, uh, medullary collecting ducts, and finally, the enters the renal papilla. Now, this, these collecting ducts, they finally open at this level, at the papilla level, at this level. Now, the urine the urine basically the urine which is basically expelled from the bladder it has the same composition as urine flowing from the collecting ducts so once the urine has reached this point to the, to the collecting ducts or technically speaking once it has reached this level you have to correlate because this nephron is present in the pyramid and we have just enlarged it so this thing the collecting duct the the, the renal papilla is present at this level so at this point, the, the composition of urine is the same as the composition of urine at this level in the bladder. Because in the way of transport, in the way of transport of urine from the kidney through the bladder into the ureter, from uh, through the ureter into the bladder, there is no change in the composition. In this passage, in these areas, in the ureter, in the bladder, there is technically no change in the composition of urine. So basically, urine uh, flowing from the collecting ducts into the renal cal uh, calluses stretches the calluses. Um, these urine basically, which is basically flowing from these collecting ducts at this point, when it flows to these calluses, it stretches it stretches these uh, calluses due to which the, the pacemaker activity of these calluses starts. And that pacemaker activity starts peristaltic movement, the peristaltic movement of these calluses. And this peristaltic, these peristaltic movements, they basically spread from the calluses into the uh, renal pelvis. So, due to these peristaltic contractions uh, that spread from the renal pelvis and then downward around the length of the ureter, it helps in movement of urine. So, initially, urine has been formed at this level, which has entered this level, and once urine has touched the calluses, it activates the pacemaker activity, which leads to contractile peristaltic contraction of the uh, these uh, uh, these calluses, sorry, and the pelvis and the ure ureter. So, due to the peristaltic contraction of the ureter, urine is basically transported. Urine is basically transported from the kidney and into the bladder. But inside the uh, inside the uh, bladder, inside the bladder, the kidney, uh, sorry, the ureter. We will discuss that this is the bladder. See, the ureter is basically enter the bladder like this. But inside the bladder, inside the bladder. Inside the bladder, the ureter will have to move a few centimeters. For example, this is the wall of the this is the wall of the bladder. So the ureter will have to move few centimeters inside the wall of the bladder. Now this is the bladder and this is the wall of the bladder and inside the wall of the bladder the ureter has to move a few centimeters and then it opens at the trigone level. Now we discussed previously that this triangular shaped area on the posterior wall of the bladder is basically trigone. It is trigone and these are the points at which the ureters will open but before opening the ureters basically move a few centimeter in the wall of the uh, in the wall of the uh, bladder now how these uh, ureter the calluses and the uh, renal pelvis how they start uh, peristaltic contraction how they start these peristaltic contraction how they basically transport uh, urine so it is important to discuss that there is basically smooth muscles in the uh, renal calluses in these areas there is smooth muscles and Another thing is that the smooth muscles are not only present in these areas, they are also present in the ureter and they are basically innervated. Different kinds of nerves are supplying these uh, ureter and calluses. So, the peristaltic contractions in the uh, ureter are basically increased by the parasympathetic and inhibited. So, this innervation, this nerve which is basically parasympathetic, it will increase the peristaltic contraction. 
it will increase the peristaltic contraction in uh, uh, the sympathetic basically the sympathetic supply will basically decrease the contraction and will decrease the transport of urine from the uh, kidney into the uh, bladder so it is important that there are smooth muscles in the uh, walls of the calluses and the pelvis in the urine uh, ureter and there is also innervation with the sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve the parasympathetics will increase the contraction and uh, the sympathetics will basically inhibit or decrease uh, the contraction of the, uh, uh, the the ureter and the uh, calluses and the renal pelvis now Another important thing is that there is uh, another kind of uh, innervation of these uh, ureter as well. Inside the ureter, if we cut the ureter and if we see this is the ureter, for example, this is the wall. Of, we have cut the ureter at this level and we see this is the this is the wall of the ureter. So there is some intramural neuron connection inside the wall. There are some intramural neurons. So these intramural uh, nervous connection, they also basically help in the, uh, you know, these, these intramural neurons, they basically also help in the peristaltic contraction of the uh, ureter and basically help in the transport of urine from the kidney through the ureter. So this is how, that's how basically the urine is transported from the kidney into the uh, bladder. Initially the, initially, the urine basically moves, initially the urine moves from the collecting ducts into the uh, minor calluses, then the major calluses, then the pelvis, then the ureter, and finally the, it moves into the bladder. But in the bladder, in the bladder, the ureter has to move few centimeters in the wall of the bladder and due to the tone of the detrusor muscle, this is detrusor muscle, this is the detrusor muscle, due to the tone of the detrusor muscle, this ureter in the, uh, normally is closed. This is normally closed. But when the peristaltic contraction of the ureter starts, due to the peristaltic contraction, the, this uh, ureter will open and ureter, uh, urine will basically move into the bladder. So at this level, at this level, the ureter is basically moving a few centimeters in the wall and due to the tone of the detrusor muscle, due to the tone of the detrusor muscle, this portion of the ureter is normally closed. But when the contraction, when the peristaltic contraction of the ureter starts, those contractions, those peristaltic contraction basically moves the urine from the ureter into the wall of, the, into the bladder. So that's all about the transport of urine from the kidney through the ureter into the bladder. Thanks a lot for watching the video.